Hello everyone, welcome to a second thoughts overview of the mighty Daniel from Demons of Chaos. I went through the initial turns and observed the victory conditions, the mechanics, the buildings, units, etc. I have some conclusions on how this uh, faction plays, its uh, strengths and weaknesses. In the later parts of the video I'll show you what army compositions I would try out for some fun. As always, this is what I do before a campaign, what I check out for while making my plans. This is not to be considered a fully in-depth guide, although it may help you. And please do comment below with your thoughts, particularly the demons are so varied in playstyle that I want to know how you guys do it. Without further ado, let's go play Daniel. For your short victory conditions, you will need to ascend in service to any Chaos God or as an undivided champion of all. You know, just another day at work. You can also occupy, loot, raise or sack 35 different settlements while they're at it. If you achieve the short victory, of course you will be rewarded with some... something. In this case, Winds of Magic Power Reserve plus 30 per turn for all armies. A very decent one, uh, particularly for the Demons of Chaos. It's actually important for you to have some magic around, so that will be good. Now, this should take quite some time, as it is via Glory. It will take a long time to cum accumulate it enough for you to ascend here. In terms of the long victory condition, of course you need to achieve the short one, occupy Loot Razor, sack 80 different settlements, and then destroy almost everything from the Warriors of Chaos. You know, basically just not Feastus and Belker, for whatever reason, they get a pass. Uh, should you achieve this, you'll be rewarded with plus 10 Lord Recruit rank. Now, this is very important. Most of the Lords that you'll have uh, will be Heralds, and basically uh, those, those Lords can ascend to Exalted uh, Demons. So that'll be cool for you to, you know, do it as soon as possible, if you prefer that option, okay? Now, in terms of Daniel, he's a god killer. So he has access to all demon units via demonic glory, and while inflicting damage with friendly unit, friendly, friendly lords in battle, sorry, you will unlock random army abilities. Of course, this is in reference to the Korn, Nurgle, Slanesh, and Zinch army abilities. As for climates, it seems Daniel should be called Anakin instead. He just dislikes sand. In terms of uh, climate in itself, it's so easy to show it like this. Everything is green and yellow. Other than that part right there. <laughs> Which is, it makes this a, a wonderful faction actually for domination just for that case. Okay. So I hope you enjoy replaying this one and try or trying even just to dominate the map. As for your starting location, it is very well nicely tucked in the middle of the map, but also on the very top of it. Uh, should you conquer the first province, the Noise and Tumor, it is a three settlement province. And of course that will help, but it's still a little bit too spread out for my taste. Of course, it goes on into both uh, locations, both sides that you'll have to face. Uh, Boris is nearby, it's quite nearby here, and Malus is also nearby, so you'll have to take care with fights possibly breaking out in both uh, locations. Do be wary of that. Also, threats from Throg may also come abound, but maybe you have some diplomacy to do there. In terms of diplomacy, it's pretty negligible. Most of the time you'll be at war with everyone. Just kidding. There's still hope, of course, plenty of opportunities for maybe the Dark Elves even, or Norska to ally you. Those would be the two main targets for me to try an alliance with. Perhaps with some gifts from you. Give them a settlement or something like that, something huge that you can definitely get immediately an alliance for them. And that's that will be nice. You can also invest here on your skill line with some diplomatic relations with Warriors of Chaos, Demons of Chaos, Beastmen and Norska. That can be also an alternative. In terms of outposts, I would get from the Dark Elves maybe some of their infantry, some of their cavalry, you know, anything with shields really as well. And for the Norska, maybe some single entities and infantry. Also some missile troops from both are possibly a good idea as well. 
In terms of mechanics, let's talk about Demonic Glory. You can dedicate to Undivided or to specific gods, or you can gain these glory points, basically from mostly from settlements that you capture. Uh, these will unlock uh, abilities, they will unlock units, they will unlock items, basically gifts from the gods for you to continue on your journey. The entire idea is for you to uh, customize your lord and thus your faction. Uh, near the end here you'll be uh, able to dedicate to a specific god and grant specific buffs. So for instance if you dedicate to Undivided you'll get all the elite troops from all the Chaos gods, but just minor buffs, basically minor um, gifts from the gods. But if you dedicate to a specific Chaos God, you only get those from that specific Chaos God, but some major gifts, some offerings from the for the glory of that specific Lord. You have to choose, you cannot choose all of them, so be wary of your choice. An additional mechanic of sorts is basically your character in itself. As you can see here, you can dedicate to specific and use specific ones, um, you know, specific types of weapons, specific uh, types of wings, all of that is, is granted by those demonic glory uh, gifts that you receive from the gods. And of course you can then customize your lord and you'll change the stats, you'll change how it plays. It's really interesting and one of the best the parts of this, uh, uh, this campaign actually. The customize your own lord, it's always amazing. And then you also have the skill line for this lord. Of course, basically for every single uh, chaos god, uh, you'll have sort of a red line. So for instance, you can buff these units from Kea, from Korn here, uh, then you can buff their uh, cavalry sort of uh, armies, then the sort of units, you know, minor monsters and major monsters, etc. So basically this is how it works in terms of the skill line for Daniel. In this case he's called Dolgas, this is from a different save. Um, yep, yeah, that, that is it in terms of mechanics. As for edits, you can dedicate to simply to corruption, to corn, which gives you corn glory, recruitment cost, and local recruitment capacity plus one, to Nurgle, which gives you growth, Nurgle glory, of course, campaign movement range minus for enemies, Slanesh glory gives you. Uh, Slanesh gives you Slanesh glory and control, and for Zinch you get glory, a chance of uh, plague spreading, a minor a minus chance of uh, plague spreading, and income from all buildings. All of these rather interesting choices. As for army stances, it's pretty basic. You get channeling at a cost of 10% movement range, and camp and raid at a cost of 50%. And camp, of course, gives you enemies replenishment and access to the global recruitment pool. And you can also ambush at a cost of 25 movement points. Pretty standard uh, stuff for uh, the demons of chaos here. So in terms of buildings, basically, you get everything, sort of. The military part is defined by the individual god that you set the settlement to, in this case Nurgle, for instance. The infrastructure is nearly always the same as well. It just changes the god in some aspects. For instance, you get growth, always growth, and then recruitment costs for minus 30% for Nurgle units. This could be for Zinj, this could be for Korn. I guess you get the idea. You also get the, the income uh, building, you get a Nurgle glory or Zinch or Corn, depending on the one that you get. And casualty replenishment rate, some hero capacity for, guess what, heroes of that specific uh, Chaos God, and some corruption for that specific God. And you also get a control building that gives you a garrison based on, guess what, again, Chaos units for that specific Chaos God. Now, there is no research tree. Yikes, that is actually one of my small gripes with the faction I wish it had, something that I wish could be changed in the future. Instead, everything is completely focused on your Daniel character. It kind of acts both as the, re the mechanics and the research tech, everything like that. So, it is both a good point and a bad point, unfortunately, of this uh, um, overall faction. Instead of the typical skin line, your Demon Lord has access to Undivided and specific Chaos Gods buffs. The Undivided line resembles a typical blue line. 
with some growth, for instance, some control, some diplomatic relations, note to this, at the Root Marcher for campaign movement range, and Lightning Strike, as well as redux, Reduced Upkeep, sorry, for each of the specific Chaos Gods, whichever you should use, of course, whichever you'll use uh, in your armies. Now, the for each Chaos God, they of course buff all their specific demonic units, such as you see here, and also focus on specific aspects such as sacking income, for instance, for corn, re replenishment rate for Nurgle, hero action success chance for all heroes. Here, this is a, a faction-wide buff as well, so be mindful of that. Same as reinforcement marker move faction-wide. This is all interesting, but of course it's about that customization again. It's all focused on this customization there. Now, you're then allowed also to hire any herald of any uh, specific Chaos God, such as I've recruited one from Zinch here, and they will have their typical Zinch, in this case, Zinch uh, buffs. So, for instance, on the red line, uh, it will have for Zinch units, of course, and uh, on, on the, the magic or the specific line, it will be for, you know, whatever Zinch magic will count for. If it is Nurgle, for instance, can be Death or can be uh, Nurgle magic. That's about it. So you get the gist of it. This gives you quite a, a nice chance to mix up some stuff, of course. Can you imagine, for instance, healing corn units? Or, you know, or, or giving some damage dealing to, to Nurgle or some speed to Nurgle? That's all the possibilities of this campaign. In terms of armies, you can dedicate to all gods, or to specific ones, Korn, Nurgle, Slanish, Zinj, and be granted these units to use in your armies. Therefore, here are some examples of army compositions that are tried to use a lot for Daniel. Of course, the other ones depend so much on what you choose to, what units you choose, what heralds you choose, so I'll leave you to that. But, for instance, if you wish a Korn plus Zinj combination, of course you can use more combinations, that's just like using double. It reminds me of Magic the Gathering when you combine two colors, you know, that's about it. So, of course, some blood letters, some missile troops from Zinj, and some elite troops from Korn, because this assumes I've dedicated it to corn or to undivided, for instance. And then I can have some Nurgle or Slanish, you know, fast cavalry with some grinding power from Nurgle, some Nurgle magic and healing, for instance. I chose the Deathcaster here because that's the the uh, a default, but of course it would be much better to use a, a Nurgle one with some healing. You can imagine some demonettes with healing. <laughs> and of course we can also have Slanish for Zinch, you know, some missile power, some fast troops all around, or some Zinch and Slanesh. The difference here is basically that I'm focusing on the elite units from Zinch. This is more of a flying sort of uh, idea, you know, in case you want some flyers to dominate the map. It's all up to you. It's all about that uh, wonderful customization that we can all get with this army. To summarize, this is a fantastic, different and unique campaign, solely focused on the, your character, Daniel, or whatever you call him. You can call, you call him Susan, if you like. Replay value and the enormous variety of units is what makes this campaign so fun. For the most part, you have access to an army of great infantry, good missiles, fast cavalry, some great monsters and single entities, plenty of flying units, but you lack some shield units for the front line and you do need to decide what to take. Replenishment is average, it depends on some gameplay factors and your choices. But still, I believe it is now a good time for you to go and play with Daniel the Demon.